Have you ever thought to yourself, yeah, rollerblading looks fun, but it's just not dangerous enough? Well, then I have the project for you. This all started back when I was in college and I was the weird guy on campus, rollerblading past cyclists on my way to class. And even though I looked way cooler than them, I couldn't help but feel a little silly when I was working harder and getting all sweaty. Now the cyclists were one thing, but then there were all the people with electric skateboards. I mean, there I was doing manual work like a caveman while they were using 21st century technology. So what to do? You've probably seen tons of electric skateboard brands like boosted boards, and there are a ton of DIY skateboard companies that sell components that you can just plug together. None of this really exists for rollerblades, and probably for good reason. So I was faced with only two possible options, either learn how to skateboard, or spend the next three years of my life making a pair of electric rollerblades that cost three times as much. You might have guessed by the thumbnail and title of this video which direction I went. Now this is arguably not the best decision, as rollerblades are not that practical as an everyday mode of transportation, and also way less safe, but it was also a lot more fun. Alright, so let's dive in and see what it took to actually make these electric rollerblades and see how they perform. My goals going to this project were to create a pair of electric powered rollerblades that could skate like normal rollerblades, were compact, were durable, and could be easily repaired, were more than just toys so they needed to have some serious power, and that could be made by me in a cost effective manner, so no designs that would require welding aluminum when I'm a complete novice, and no designs that would require a crazy 5 axis CNC machine and cost almost as much as a used car to make. Because of these goals, most of my design decisions revolved around the motor and the drive system. Starting with the drive system, there are so many directions that I could have gone. Some of the solutions that I've seen are using friction to drive the rollerblade wheel directly from the motor, having a motor hang off the back, or even custom building a hub motor. And so these all have disadvantages, um, which I'll talk about, and I didn't end up going with them ultimately. So for example, traction between the motor and the wheel can be an issue with the friction drive and it can increase wear on the wheel. This could potentially have poor reliability as a result. Um, having a motor hang off the back adds bulkiness, which would make it difficult to use the rollerblades as you would normal rollerblades. And a custom hub motor is just way outside of my wheelhouse, pun intended, as it would require CNC machining and potentially many prototypes as I've never made a motor before. Another concern with the hub motor is how to make the wheels rubber replaceable as that will wear out eventually. Ultimately, I went with a chain driven system that uses a standard bike chain like this one right here. And chain driven systems have an advantage of being very durable, cheap and powerful. And this would allow me to use uh, standard rollerblade wheels like these 110 millimeter wheels, so long as I could stick something between their spokes and drive them. The one major downside to using chains is the noise, but that's something that I can live with. And so some might be asking why I would not just go with belts as they're very common on electric skateboards. And so these sound like a good idea at first, and that was actually the route I took, but they're also much wider than the bike chains. And I was trying to keep the skates as thin as possible for the best skating performance. Once I decided on a drive system, I then moved on to selecting a motor and a gear ratio. As I mentioned before, I wanted to keep everything as slim as possible because it would make the skates perform more like normal skates. Luckily for me, pancake motors, which are strong motors that are squished flat, are fairly common thanks to multi-rotors and drones. I managed to find these Mad Components M6 C12 motors, which had the perfect dimensions to fit inside some standard 2x4 inch aluminum tubing, which I could machine to make the frames of the rollerblades. This decision would allow me to do minimal machining and save a lot of money when compared to machining out a big old block of aluminum or doing some more complex shapes. Now I'm not sponsored by Mad Components, but these motors are pretty cool as they are compact, have the specs and dimensions on their website, and I was able to order my motors with a custom 100 kV rating for more torque. Now if I were to directly drive the wheel with this motor, I could in theory go 43 miles per hour, kind of scary, the only problem with that is that I wouldn't have very much torque and it would take a long time to get up to speed, if I could at all. For this reason, I chose a gear ratio of 1.78 to 1, where the motor has a sprocket with 9 teeth and the wheel sprocket has 16 teeth. In theory, assuming I used a 10S lithium ion battery, I'd be able to hit somewhere around 24 miles an hour, which is still plenty fast. 
With those design decisions out of the way, I went ahead with designing the skates by modeling them in Fusion 360. From there, I machined the frame and 3D printed all the components, and this definitely worked the first go around. In all seriousness, I started with one skate as a proof of concept, which actually worked out really well. What was that? It can't even break. Does that set up uh, sketchy enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> Got my, the Sharpie? My little dangly bits. <laughs> With the basic design validated, I moved forward by refining the design, making a battery, actually making two at that, and making a fanny pack to hold them, adding to the cool factor. <laughs> Initially, I'd planned to do separate batteries for each foot, but found them to be a bit too heavy. But it would be really cool to not need cables going up to a fanny pack, so I may revisit this in the future, at least for shorter rides. Since remote controls that can send to two receivers are non-existent, and I would want to program custom driving modes in the future, I also custom designed and made two receivers along with a remote. The remote uses a thumbstick that you would see on any ordinary gaming controller, and it can display useful information on its OLED screen. One challenge that I faced around this time was that the skates were jerky and didn't really have a lot of torque at startup. And this was pretty sketchy and meant that I would have to push the skates to get started and sometimes I would lose my footing. To understand why this was happening, we first need to know a bit about how brushless DC motors work. So in a brushless DC motor, permanent magnets on the rotor, the part that rotates, get pulled around the electromagnets on the stator, the parts that remain stationary. The timing of when the electromagnets turn on to pull the permanent magnets is critical. Otherwise, the electromagnets could be pushing the permanent magnets the wrong direction or providing their force at a suboptimal point in the motor's rotation. This is similar to playing a game of tetherball where you really need to hit the ball at the correct time to give the ball speed and to keep it rotating around the pole. For the motor to know when is the correct time to turn on the electromagnets, it needs to know the position of the rotor at all times, which can be accomplished in many ways. The motor controllers that I used have a cool feature called Field Oriented Control, or FOC, that can detect the position of the rotor by sensing the permanent magnets as they move around the coils on the electromagnets. But this has one major flaw. This only works if the motor is spinning because according to Faraday's law, the voltage generated in a wire is proportional to the change in magnetic flux. If there's no change, then there's no voltage and there's no way to detect where the motor is. Also, this works better the faster that the motor is spinning since the faster the permanent magnets move, the higher the voltages that can generate in the electromagnet, making them easier to detect. To get around this, I used a magnetic encoder, which is able to detect even very small rotations of a special magnet, which I attached to the output shaft of the motor. With this, the motor controller can know its exact position at lower speeds, which makes it a lot smoother and provides a lot more torque when starting. Then, when it gets to higher speeds, where the field-oriented control is more accurate, it switches to that. To clean up the design, I also created a custom circuit board for the encoder as well. If I were to do this again, I might see if the motor manufacturer could just build in some other position sensors like you would get on many skateboard motors, but I'll leave that for next time. These changes made the riding experience a lot more enjoyable and way less sketchy. Now that you've seen how they were built, let's put them to the actual test to see how they perform. All right, so here I am on the beautiful UC Davis campus. As you can see, I've got my remote, uh, got my skates, and I'm ready to see how fast I can go. So let's give that a try. So one of the things you'll notice is on the remote, there is a little OLED screen, which you can't really read right now, but uh, yeah, I'll show some B-roll of that in action. But it tells me my speed, my battery temperature, how much amps I'm giving the skates, uh, along with, uh, you know, just other useful metrics. So, yeah, I can just push up on the thumbstick to get going. 
And when I want to slow down, just pull back. So let's give it a try. All right, let's see how fast we can get. All right, 16. 18, 19, 20 miles per hour, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, looks like we capped out at 24.4 miles per hour. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's as fast as you'd really want to go on a pair of rollerblades, I think, so, uh, you know, we'll roll with it. Okay, so now that I'm done with the speed test, I'm just going to see how far I can actually go with these. So, yeah, I'm going to film myself as I do that, and then I'll see you back at the, the home shop. All right, so we're back at the garage and the results are in. 
After reviewing the data, I was able to hit around 24 and a half miles per hour, and I went 6.9 miles on a quarter of a charge. Nice. Giving me about 28 total miles range in theory. I'm super happy with how the skates turned out, and I think I accomplished most of the goals that I set out to achieve. An improvement that I intend to make at some point is to have different skating modes. Currently, the remote control is configured to set the amount of current that the motors get, so if I lift the skate off the ground, it's just going to spin as fast as it possibly can and scream like a banshee. What I'd like to do is make it so that the controller can detect when it's off the ground and then limit the speed, and then probably locking it to the same speed as the other wheel if possible. Additionally, it would be fun to have a minimal assist mode where the skates work with no controller and just detect how much juice to give the motors based on the user pushing. So, would I recommend that others build these? <laughs> no, I would strongly recommend that others do not attempt something similar as, even as a very experienced skater, I recognize that going 24 miles per hour on a pair of rollerblades is not the safest thing to do. That said, they are also incredibly fun, and I had a blast making them. I'm still not sure what I plan to do with the designs, but I have been considering open sourcing them, so let me know if that's something that interests you. Finally, I just want to thank everyone who watched this video. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, please like and subscribe.